gives leaders access. This access is to power. Fortunately, it would be wise if every leader would know that this access is just for two crucial facts. Number one, the power that is made available to a leader is by virtue of the position that they occupy. Number two, the purpose of the power given is to serve the common good of everyone. When a leader forgets these two facts, they tend to become power drunk. And once a leader becomes power drunk, it impedes their ability to lead effectively. And more importantly, it causes them ultimately to fall from grace. Hello, our beautiful viewers, and welcome to Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. I'm Wonola Detayo, your host. Women on the Watch is committed to exposing time-tested principles for your personal and relationship development. Before we start, I want to seize this opportunity to welcome every one of you that is new on the program and also all our regular viewers. We assure you that we have a very fulfilling and blessed time with us today. I'd like to acknowledge all of you who, through your inquiries, comments, questions, purchase of our books, even sponsorship, we want to say we're very grateful that you have connected with us. And in case we have not responded to you, please rest assured that your case is receiving full attention. The Almighty God will bless you all very, very richly. As more women are called into leadership at all levels, it is very obvious that this call is not for women to fill a gender gap. It's not simply to create gender balance. It is rather a call for better leadership. It is a call for women to play their own role in ensuring leadership effectiveness that benefits everyone. And therefore, as women, we must seize the opportunity to lead and we must maximize that opportunity for the betterment of others. We must learn from the mistakes of the past. And it is for this reason that we had started last week the series that is titled Bad Babes in the Corridors of Power so that we can avoid the landmines and the leadership errors that others have made in the past. We explored last week the case study about Jezebel and we learned through Jezebel's story the five symptoms or signs of anyone that may be having the issue of power drunkenness. Today, we are going to continue and conclude our discussion on Jezebel as case study because she mismanaged power to her own detriment. First, let us take our Bible reading for this episode. Our Bible reading for this episode is taken from 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 35 and 36. 2 Kings 9, 35 and 36. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake to his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we hallow your name. We bow before you, the leader of all leaders, the author of leadership. We ask, O oh God, in humility, that God, you will chastise us where we need to be chastised. You will correct us where we need to be corrected. You will teach us where we need to be taught. And we pray, Father, that our hearts will be receptive to your teaching, to your correction, and to your chastisement. So that at the end of today's episode, every leader will become a better one in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be thy name, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The story of Jezebel 
Long ago, a king of Israel named Ahab married the daughter of the king of Sidon, whose name was Jezebel. Jezebel worshipped Baal, which was contrary to Israel's God, yet she influenced her husband, King Ahab, to do the same. King Ahab indeed set up a temple for Baal. This act incurred God's anger and he sent Elijah the prophet to announce a drought which lasted three years. The entire citizens of the nation suffered in the drought for the sins their leaders and his wife committed. Amid this pain, which obviously affected the citizens more than the leaders, Jezebel decided to kill off the prophets of God. God then sent Elijah to present himself before King Ahab. Elijah directed Ahab to summon all Israel and all the 450 prophets of Baal to Mount Carmel for a showdown. This was to enable people know who God was between Baal and Jehovah. Elijah represented Jehovah, while the 450 prophets represented Baal. And it was agreed that whichever of the two gods answered by fire would be declared the true God. Despite untoward efforts by Baal's prophets, it was only Jehovah that answered by fire. And Elijah directed the execution of the 450 prophets of Baal afterwards. Once the nation was rid of the evil idols and the prophets of Baal, rain fell and the drought ended. What a relief for the innocent citizens. When Ahab told Jezebel about the execution of the prophets of Baal, she swore to kill Elijah by the next day, and this caused Elijah to run for his dear life. Not long after King Ahab converted after the vineyard of Naboth and asked him to sell to him, Naboth refused to sell it because it was the inheritance of his ancestors. King Ahab went home, sullen and angry. He refused to eat. When Jezebel asked her husband why he wouldn't eat, he told his wife about the vineyard and Naboth that Naboth had refused to sell to him. Jezebel taunted the king for being distressed and assured him that she would get him the vineyard. Jezebel then wrote letters to the elders in Naboth's city using Ahab's seal of authority to request the elders to orchestrate a false accusation against Naboth and have him stoned to death, which they did. Once Jezebel heard that her orders had been executed, she encouraged Ahab to take possession of the vineyard because Naboth was dead and King Ahab did as his wife had instructed. But God sent a word through Elijah to hear Ahab that in the place where Naboth's blood was licked up, his blood would also be licked up. God also declared that dogs would devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel and would eat those who belonged to Ahab. Years later, King Ahab died in the battle and dogs licked up his blood as God had promised. Jehu was then anointed king of Israel and God commanded him to destroy the house of Ahab to avenge the blood of God's prophets that were killed by Jezebel. When Jezebel heard that the new king Jehu was coming to see her, she got dressed and put on some makeup and even fixed her hair. She then looked out of the window and asked if Jehu had come in peace whilst declaring him a murderer. In response, Jehu asked if anyone was on his side and asked them to throw Jezebel down. Jezebel was thrown out of the window and as her body was going down, some of her blood spattered on the wall and the horses as they trampled on her. By the time that King Jehu asked that Jezebel's corpse be buried, they found nothing of her except her skull, her feet, and her hands, just as God had declared. It is our heartfelt prayer that in our families, businesses, and nation, God will have mercy on us and arrest the hearts of leaders so they will rule in the fear of God. We also pray that God will rid us of every unrepentant wicked leader that is causing pain, sorrow, and weeping in our families and nations. In Jesus' name, amen. A successful marriage does not happen by chance, it is built deliberately. 
Just as every building requires a foundation, so does every marriage. In laying the foundation for a lasting marriage, Wanawola Adatayo presents couples and intending couples with practical insights and guidance as a wise coach inspired by the Holy Spirit. The book draws on biblical principles and patterns to instruct and equip readers for a marriage that will bring glory to God while also affording the couple lasting joy and fulfillment. With inspired prayer points and practical answers to 44 frequently asked questions, laying the foundation for a lasting marriage is a treasure trove for readers at every stage of the marriage journey. Send a WhatsApp message or call 0812 402 0538 to order your copies today. Brethren, having reviewed the story of Jezebel, this concluding episode that is titled Power Drunkenness, part two, we will examine three things. Number one, the consequences of power drunkenness on followers, poor followers. Then we will look at the consequences of power drunkenness on the perpetrator, that is the leader himself or herself. And lastly, we will look at the delicate subject of how do we overcome power drunkenness. So, what are the consequences of power drunkenness on the followers? We have identified about five. Number one, the followers' needs are not met. Secondly, followers are misled. Thirdly, the dreams of the followers are never actualized. Fourthly, followers are mistreated when there's power drunkenness. And lastly, followers may suffer fatalities. We'll examine each one very, very briefly. Let's look at the followers' needs being unmet as the first consequence, the first fallout of power drunkenness. You see, when a leader becomes power drunk, the leader becomes unable, incapable of meeting the needs of the people. Why? Because she, the person, he or she, is power drunk and cannot even see. So as a result, the real needs of the people being led generally are ignored. If we look at Jezebel and Ahab, they never once thought of the needs of their own people. They never thought about it, and therefore they didn't even have a governance agenda for the people. Therefore, Jezebel prioritized the worship of Baal, destroyed the people's relationship with their God, and he now brought strange gods that other people began to follow. That is what usually happens. When a leader is power drunk, they will just move people into the wrong direction, and then their needs never get met. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 5. Ezekiel 34, verse 5. It says, so they were scattered because there was no shepherd and they became food for all the wild beasts. Second consequence of power drunkenness on followers, the followers are mistreated. The followers are misled. Leaders who become completely enamored with their power, they often demand that their followers do their bidding, whether it is right, whether it is wrong. As a result, you will see somebody like Jezebel cooking up lies against an innocent man and turned all the followers to become mischief makers. They became daylight murderers overnight. Jeremiah 56, uh, 50 and verse 6, Jeremiah 50 and verse 6 says, My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains, from mountains to hill. They have gone. They have forgotten their fold. You see, when a, a leader is power drunk, they do havoc to their followers. The third thing that happens to followers as a consequence of power drunkenness is that their dreams are never actualized. You see, when the, when the leader is power drunk, what usually happens is that the followers cannot even dream again. Their ability to think has become stunted. It has become limited. You see, Nabot's dream, for example, was that the legacy that the parents gave to him which is the vineyard. He was going to keep that as an inheritance for the children's children. But you see, because of power drunkenness, that dream was sabotaged. That dream was truncated. That dream was terminated. Another challenge, I mean, sorry, for, for that uh, 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 unrealized dream, Proverbs 
29 2 tells us it says when the righteous increase the people rejoice when the wicked rule the people groan they groan because they can't think they groan because they can't realize their dreams they groan because they become less than themselves the fourth consequence is mistreatment mistreatment leaders who are drunk on power they mistreat others they stampede them they step on them their followers lack esteem their followers you know, they lack a, 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 a sense of feeling, a sense of what they lack it. Jezebel killed innocent prophets of God. Why? Because she just wanted people to know it is either my way or the highway. Nobody does, does anything except it is approved by me. So they mistreat people. Mistreatment is another consequence. And you see, Ezekiel 34, 4 tells us, he said, the weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up the strayed. You have not brought back the lost. You have not sought. And with force and harshness, you have ruled over them. Last but not the least, when a leader is power drunk, the followers, they may suffer fatalities. People die because insecurities, both the self-made and the ones that happen by themselves. You see, it was Jezebel that created a situation we are neighbors, had to die, had to die because of our drunkenness. Zechariah 11.5, Zechariah 11.5 says, who possess us, slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they sell them and say, blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. Very sad situation. Now, the leader that is power drunk, hey, it's not only people that are collateral damage. That leader them, himself or herself has consequences. Let's look at the consequences on the leader. The leader, number one, loses touch with reality. Secondly, the leader loses the respect of the followers. Why? Because they can see him or her. The leader, the heart of that leader becomes hardened. And lastly, the leader is destroyed. Let's take a quick look at some of these things. Number one. When the leader loses a, a sense of reality, you know why? Because they are so power drunk, they are in a world of their own. Only psychophants are around them. Nobody is able to tell them the truth about the real situation. And so oftentimes, they misjudge, they misunderstand, they think all is well when all is not well. You see, when a leader is power drunk, they, 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 they perceive things that are not happening because they think that that power is going on and going on. Jezebel did not see beyond her own needs. She was completely lost in her power drunken state. Proverbs 11, 6 says, the, right, the righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the treacherous are taken captive by their lust. So the task for power has taken her captive and she's just in the world of our own. The second consequence of the leader is loss of respect. A power intoxicated leader loses the respect of the people. You see, while Jezebel was still in her own euphoria, she did not realize that she had become a subject of mockery because if not, how come the people inside of our own palace are the same people that threw her down for the dogs to eat? She did not realize she had lost complete respect. Philippians chapter 6 verse 9 says, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Therefore, because of that, God exalted his name, you know, and he placed him high and gave him the name that is above every other name. You see, when a, a, a leader is power drunk, they lose respect. Number three, their heart becomes hardened. You see, Jezebel's heart had become hardened. Ahab's heart has become hardened. Because of power drunkenness. Revelations 2 5 says, Remember therefore where you are falling. Repent and do the, the, the first works. If not, I will come to you and I will remove your lampstand from his place. Unless you repent. God sent Elijah to Ahab, to Jezebel. Instead of changing, their heart became hardened. And that's why they lost both of their lives and they ended up very disgracefully. Let us look at the fourth consequence is destruction. Ultimately, destruction, the ultimate price of power drunkenness is destruction. When a leader is power drunk, they set themselves up. Why? Because it is God that himself 
will destroy them because when you are power drunk, you are playing God and God will not tolerate idolatry. Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 1 to 3 says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, Ah, shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. So destruction is their end. Jeremiah 50, 31 says, See, I am against you, arrogant one, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. On your day has come. He said, the time for you to be punished. I pray for you, and I pray for every leader, that we will repent quickly, that we will not wait for our destruction. You see, today, we have examined the unpalatable consequences of power drunkenness for leaders. The unpalatable consequences of power drunkenness, even for the led. The question is, can we do better? Is it possible to overcome power drunkenness? The answer is yes. Let's look at one or two tips before we close this episode. Your number one antidote for power drunkenness is humility. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. Just humble yourself. That I'm in a leadership position does not make me better than anybody else. Romans 12, 16 says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with the people of low position. Don't be conceited. Many people, when they leave their exalted position, they can't mix again because they have arrogated themselves. So one of the antidotes to power drunkenness is humility. Let's look at a second antidote. That is accountability accountability to overcome power drunkenness hold yourself accountable for the welfare of those that you are leading and measure your success as a leader by the state of their well-being the, the the bible tells us in proverbs 27 23 know well the condition of your flocks and pay attention to your herds let's look at a third antidote that antidote is what repentance repentance if you have become a victim of power drunkenness, please look for a senior colleague who is in right standing and confess your sins and repent of it. We are told in James chapter 5, verse 16 to do that. And then let us look at a fourth antidote, and that is integrity. My friends, on your leadership journey, just make up your mind that you will do what is right before God because he will be your judge, not the accolades of the people. God was the one that ultimately judged Ahab. God is the one that ultimately judged Jezebel, not the people. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3 says, The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Make up your mind. Your yea will be yea, and your nay will be nay. Today, we have concluded the episode titled Power Drunkenness. The story of Jezebel has taught us that power drunkenness has real consequences on the leader, also has consequences on the lead, also has consequences on the nation. While many people start out their leadership journey with good intentions, believe you me honestly, many often stray into power drunkenness. I pray for you and I pray for me that as we start out again, on our leadership journey. Let us humble ourselves. Let us determine to be accountable. Let us ask God to help us to understand that he alone is the source of power. He alone is the source of our promotion. And as we do this, I know that the almighty God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells me in Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 4, it is the Lord your God that you must follow. It is him that you must revere. Keep his commandments and obey him. Serve him and hold fast unto me. Please say after me, Lord Jesus, help me as a leader. Help me to stay humble. Lord, help me to be accountable. Lord, help me, my Father, my God, to repent where I have gone wrong. And Father, help me to please you alone so that my integrity will justify me when I stand before you in glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to say thank you for being a part of today's broadcast. If you have been blessed by this program and you would like to learn more about leadership, we want to offer you 
opportunity for leadership assessment, we also offer you leadership training services that can help you to improve yourself as a leader. Please, if you would like the services, please connect with us on information, info at shapersarc.org. And you can also contact us on plus 234-812-402-0538. And as you do this, the Almighty God will bless you. Before we sign off today, I want to invite you to join me next week as we continue the bad babes in the corridors of power. And this time around, we will be taking another female noted in the Bible as a leader. Until then, let me charge you as leaders, please stay humble. Be cognizant that you are a steward of God. And I pray that your mighty God will reward all your leadership efforts in the mighty name of Jesus. Till I come your way again next week, this is Wanola Detayo, the shaper. I trust that God will bless your leadership journey.